in the alley Shiva. He was right there. T.O. St. Dennis getting ready for the Big Ass Fans Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. And as we talked about, Aiden O'Brien uh, about to send out his horses in his unique way. And it oh, is going to be a parade of stars. Oh. City of Troy <laughs> managing to uh, shine amongst a group of horses who have accomplishments that are the envy of other yards. But City of Troy, you have watched him on the turf. We're going to get a chance to see him on the dirt in the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. Wow, what a presence. Can I say something embarrassing for him, though? He got a little poop on his leg right there. You can see, like, he had a little bit of loose poop. As long as you're and not now, saying it about me. Everyone's going to take a picture of him. He's going to have poop on his hawk. Oh, but it's the flaxen tail that I'm focusing on. <laughs> it might be poop. Yeah. And if you had over three and a half times the mention of poop on the show, you can cash your tickets. Uh, Aiden's army out on the racetrack. And how many times, uh, roughly, will they go around here? And, and before they in truly years get past, going. they don't do a whole lot. Yeah. They go one, the wrong one way lap, once, one and lap. then they turn mm -hmm. around and they do one big long gallop, Kenta, and Kenta, then they he head calls home. And do they clear the rest of the track for them? And, and, and sometimes they've been out there by themselves. But I, is that the well, case? Well, it depends here? if they've cleared quarantine or not. So, some, depending on the quarantine rules, some of the tracks have made an, a specific time frame uh, for horses that haven't yet cleared quarantine to be able for them to get on the track. But they can't be on the track with horses that are, you know, in the in the free and clear. Um, so, if they have cleared quarantine, then they might be out with Gen Pop. But I if they not, have, they have to be alone because the the deadline was October 27th at 10 p.m. So there were okay. a few nights ago that all of the international horses had to be here and this day the 29th was our first expected day to see them so we've reached the point of no return for arrivals if you're coming internationally you had to have been here so pretty sure everybody is out on the track that wants to be at this time it's 8 15 we're an hour past the renovation break so it should be a somewhat quiet time period out there we've already seen the horses go out for breezes that we're going to but this is always that magical moment of the breeders cup where the global feel of the entire event really sets in so this is what i love too is aiden puts these horses in an order that he feels like they need to be so if you have a little bit more of a forward mind you're in the front if you're a bit more of a follower he puts them behind right and you see city of troy second horse there after the horse that's alongside the pony so to me that shows that he mentally is very smart he handles stuff very well he doesn't get um you know bothered by outside circumstances i just love that for him coming in and trying these new things and this is obviously the first time that we've seen him on the dirt some horses can't stand up on dirt, okay? This horse is getting over the dirt fine at this jog. I can't wait to see him gallop, but as of now, I'd say he doesn't look uncomfortable on it. So a, a lot has been made of the fact that Coolmore has won just about every race around the world. Uh, but when it comes to the Breeders' Cup, which they have supported as strongly as anyone with numbers and quality horses coming over here, they've tried to win the Classic and they have not. It is really remarkable if you step back and think about it. City of Troy is the morning line favorite for the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. That was unthinkable uh, at the beginning of the Breeders' Cup that we'd have a horse come from overseas in our signature race and be the morning line favorite. Uh, but that is the case, City of Troy at five to two with Fierceness uh, being the second choice at three to one. But if you look at the accomplishments of City of Troy, if you take out the dirt part of it, he absolutely is deserved of the morning line favoritism. Yeah, like he's the best horse in Europe and yep. he is the classiest horse, you know, that they've had the opportunity to bring to the classic. I also think a part of it is the momentum, is the build up, is the marketing. We've been talking about this horse since the day he broke his maiden. I was actually on the air for us in July of 2023 that morning and there was already so much anticipation for him as a maiden first time out. So this is a goal and this is a target that has been very much on the radar and it's been discussed in interviews all the way back to last year. At some point, will you go to America? At some point, will you try the Travers? At some point, they talked about this with him because of his pedigree being a son of Justify. And so a big part of that is just the anticipation of this athlete trying something new and can he conquer the world for Coolmore? That is a, a great uh, logo there. Uh, speaking of conquering the the world. Is that in the merchandise tent? I, I know. was going to say, that it was so I mean, I went to SC fight on. Yeah, <laughs> senior producer Chris Lee desperately wants one of those as well. Uh, but look at everyone in the grandstand turning their attention towards this site. And there is the perspective uh, that really gives you an idea of how special and how unique this is. 
Aiden O'Brien and uh, his clients back to support the Breeders' Cup. And, uh, you know, you talk about Aiden O'Brien and all his accomplishments overseas. I just, you know, I think about what he does for the Breeders' Cup. You know, we have all this focus now. It's almost like the shiny object. Yeah, there's 19 Japanese horses, but Aiden O'Brien has been here for decades, and it's meant a lot to this event. It has, and I think if you also consider the global operation that he's running, I mean, look, he's got horses in the Melbourne Cup in a couple of days, too. And so he supports racing around the world with these horses and just the logistics of it all. The personnel, how many riders came with these horses? Where are these riders staying? Who's driving them to and from? I mean, there's so much to manage, and you have to appreciate the team and the business side of bringing this many horses to an international event like this. You know, it's like that athletic team in any other sport. They're so good that you show up early just to watch the shoot around or show up early just to watch them stretch out on the field. This is what it's like with uh, Aiden O'Brien. And, and something, Michelle, that Christina brought up about all the people that it takes to pull this off. Team O'Brien, what about the perspective? We talk about these exercise riders. Is this truly, I mean, I wonder how many applications they get to be part of, you know what I mean? As like, if you get to be one of these exercise riders, it's got to be almost a career-defining moment, right? I mean, you would think so, right? To get to, because you know the horse flesh you're going to be getting yeah. on is the best in the in the literal world. So you have to be um, someone that's obviously a good hand. You know what I love that Aiden always does, too, is you don't see, all of his riders are not teeny tiny, right? Mm -hmm. There's some riders that are taller. You see the rider on 860 right there is a little bit on the, the heavier side. Like, I feel like here we're a lot more um, focused on you have to be small to ride. And I think Aiden's bringing some natural horsemanship in here. You can be a, a good-sized person and still be able to ride these. Nice to see Dad let uh, Donica's horse into the line as oh, well. Yes. That was Porta Fortuna <laughs> yeah. at the end, so she gets to benefit from the, the team experience. Not that she needs any help. She's already gone all over the world with success. I 